Thank you, Alex. Good morning, everybody. Today we are celebrating what we call Camp Sunday, which means that we are lifting up our Lutheran camps, Lutheran outdoor camps here in South Dakota, but also nationwide. And this is reflected in our liturgy, as you can see, um, and also in the fact that we are going to have a Lutheran outdoors party um, at 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall. And it's really exciting. We are going to have s'mores. We will have a lot of games. There's a registration table and some more things, I think, right? I like the games. Anyway, <coughs> and the s'mores. Please uh, rise for the call to worship. A space to learn and grow. A space to try new things. A space to connect with God. A space to pass on our story. A space to feel part of nature. A space to forgive and forget. A space to be still and listen. A space to be welcomed just as we are. The Gathering Hymn today is now the feast and celebration number 167 in the Red Hymnal. Please join us for the first hymn. together our prayer of the day. Gracious God, you are so good to us. Today we offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all of the blessings revealed to us through Lutherans Outdoors in South Dakota, for the gifts of your good creation, which we encounter when we are camping, 
for forests and fields, beaches, streams, and lakes, sunrises and sunsets, wind and rain. For your gift of time and the cycle of nature, for opportunities in the out of doors to reflect and to feel your presence very near to us, for the rest and creation, recreation. For the de dedication of countless people who have supported this ministry through offerings of time and talent, builders, counselors, and instructors, for the gifts of all who create and maintain an environment of faithfulness and healing through their example at camp. For the blessings you make known to us through those who participate at camp, for the questions and discoveries, for the friendships and fun, for the music and stories, we give you thanks, O oh God. You may be seated and we are going to hear the first lesson. <coughs> Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 36, verses 5 to 10. I will read the light print, and you can respond in the bold print, and together we will do the refrain, which is verse 8. Your love, O God, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. We feast upon the abundance of your house, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. 
to another gifts of healing by the one spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues all these are activated by the one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses the word of the lord Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jar with, jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine, after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated as we sing, Jesus Loves Me, for the children to come forward. I will be singing, singing a hymn. All right, we'll, we'll have a musical reflection first. There we go. No, that's fine. We'll have you first, and then the, the boys sit with me right here. How's that? While you're already up. We'll listen from right here. Thank you. 
now we get to sing Jesus Loves Me for the children to come forward. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, today we are celebrating Camp Sunday. Has anyone ever been at Bible Camp? Raise your hand. Anyone ever been at Bible Camp? Even if you just picked up your kids. You have set foot on the camp, and you have been at Bible camp. So what are some of the wonderful things we can do at Bible camp? We pray. We go to worship. Do they have unicorns there? No? What do they have at the Bible camp you go to? Horses. Big or small? Big horses. All right. You make friends. Anything else to add? You read the Bible. You make memories. You go swimming. I shouldn't tell you this, but my favorite part is the food. I, I don't have to cook for a whole week. And no snacks that I have to prepare either. Sing, you sing. We like the songs from camp, don't we? So lots of fun things. So why would we do Bible camp time? Well, I brought my little box. And I think Bible camp is a little bit like what's in my little box. Our faith get sometimes a little glimpse of how wonderful our Lord is, right? He's pretty amazing, pretty awesome. But at Bible camp, we get to look a little closer. So I'm going to have a peek. All right, could you see it? How about now? How wonderful that is. No? How about now? Yep, that's enough. No? That's a trick question. Well, at Bible Cam, we get to see how special our God is in a very magnifying way. Because we get to look at God and our neighbor a little closer, right? And then we get to see for quite some time how big and awesome our God really is, don't we? So would you suggest that some other people should go to Bible camp? Like who? Like all of them? Yeah. yeah, wouldn't that be fun? We would all go to Bible camp together? You don't think so? Well, I think that would be awesome. Well, today, in between, after you're done singing, and in for your Sunday school time, we actually get to go to camp downstairs. There are games and s'mores. And sign up. So if you're ready to go to camp, you're just going to take your mom and your dad or whoever you have with, and you take them to the table and say, I want to go there. When do we go? We go first week of August, and anyone can go with us, right? Yeah, you can go with too. We'll take you with. So let's pray for this awesome God we have. Give him thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your awesomeness and that we get to experience you up close at Bible camps. 
where your beauty and your wonder and your love is magnified. And then we, then we are asked to take it out into our world to show what an awesome, loving God you are. In Christ's name, amen. And I haven't forgotten about the pots. It's jingle change time today. We'll be supporting the Union Gospel Mission in Sioux Falls, who help us to house folks. If we don't, you can go. Don't forget to go by the sides. Go to the sides. Go to the sides. Let's go that way. Go to the side, right there. There we go. There we go. Are we back here yet? Did they miss you? They're just fast ushers. You be on task here. I need some people to come back with your pots. By the way, in Bible camp, you can also do CrossFit, which is really fantastic. It was my favorite activity. Until he got sore. Yeah, until I got sore. We'll be telling you that. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we're in the second chapter of John and things are moving right along. But to, to really get to the wedding, I think we need to just kind of look at what has happened beforehand. So the word became flesh and the flesh dwelt among its people and the word made light for all people to shine. And then John the Baptist comes onto the scene and he testifies to the glory of God and what an awesome and amazing God Jesus is for us in this world. And he's very clear, this is the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. And then Jesus in one line gets baptized and John witnesses that I saw the Spirit descend on Jesus, and he truly is the Messiah. And upon the baptism and that declaration, Jesus goes out and assembles this group of 12 disciples, fishermen from all walks of life, and gathers them together and says, come follow me. And Nathaniel says, well, what good can come out of Bethlehem, really? And he says, well, Nathaniel, I know a few things about you. And Nathaniel says, well, how do you know that? And Jesus says, well, I don't know just that. But when you follow me, you'll see much more greater things than these. And up Nathaniel goes along with the other disciples. And then we come to the passage where we're today, three days later. Now I, for myself, can very easily remember my very first three days in my new calling as a new pastor. I don't know how many of you can remember your very first three days on your very first real job. First three days. I have to say I was a little nervous about this whole endeavor. I wasn't so sure about myself. And here they are at the wedding. Brand new disciples. First call, first three days at a wedding. Right? I'm sure they all came there with mixed emotions. There was maybe one or two, there were maybe one or two, where they said, this is great. We get a break, you know, we were with those 12 now for three days, we kind of get a little break, we can hang out at the wedding, meet some neighbors, mingle, be social, all of that stuff. They just kind of looked at this as a welcome break from discipling, right? It's pretty tough the first three days. And then there's the other group that maybe goes to the wedding thinking, man, this isn't quite what I had thought I'll sign up for. Have you ever been at that step where you, where you just have the very first step into this adulthood life and then all of a sudden you're having buyer's remorse kind of a thing? You did something for the very first time and it felt good when you made that decision, but then all of a sudden you're thinking, yeah, I'm not so sure that that was the right choice. Talk to college students sometimes. I'm not quite sure that I made the right choice. So some of them are probably standing there thinking, man, I hope my neighbors aren't here looking at me because I don't want to know what they're thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Remember, Jesus wasn't very popular at that time yet. He was just someone that 
didn't really have a name or anything to him. In fact, he hung out with Mary, remember? That's his mother, who said that she had this baby from God. Yeah, that Mary. That Mary. And so here they are at the wedding. With mixed emotions, not quite sure where they fit in, if they did the right thing or not the right thing. They're kind of in the limbo. And then there are Mary and Jesus. Now, this isn't the first wedding they have ever attended, right? It's not really the first wedding. I can tell you countless occasions I have attended weddings with my parents, and the boys have attended weddings with us, and it's really not a big deal. It's just something normal you do on the social calendar of people living in community. So Jesus and Mary are just there for community. Jesus brought his new friends with, and on the merry way they go, until Mary says, they're out of wine. Now that particular line and that particular conversation that follows this statement tells you that Mary and Jesus had spent quite some time together. You want to know how I know that? Because Mary's skills for assertiveness are like zero in this conversation. Assertiveness is when you know what you're asking for and actually clearly express this. All she does is, she says, there are wine. What's Jesus say? It's not my business. Can you tell that this is a couple that has spent some time together? Because at my home, what happens? We were all gathered for supper. The boys still lived at home. We were all gathered around the table. I finally, everybody was already eaten, eating. I was finally, I finally sat down. It's winter, it's cold, it's like a day like this. Finally sit down, have done Emma's food. Everybody's like halfway done when I finally get to eat my cold spaghettis. And I see that the dog is waiting outside the door. He's cold. Besides being blind, he's cold. Do you know what I said? I said, the dog's outside. You know what everybody else did? <laughs> so what do I do? Classic. It's a classic mistake. I pull my chair back, get up, stomp to the door, open the door, let the dog in, shut the door, sit back down, say, anyone? You know what Paul said? Typical Paul. He says, if you wanted us to let the dog in, just ask for it. He was right. They are out of wine. Can you tell that this is her son? What's that my problem for? Mother, if you wanted me to make more wine, ask for it. And then Mary does something. She just goes. And I like to focus on this point where she just goes to the servants and says, just do what he tells you to do. What motivates her to do that? It's of course not clearly expressed, but I think as we look at the whole entire story of Jesus and his mother, I think there's some deep empathy and compassion Mary has. And I think in this deep compassion and empathy she has lies some deep truth for us as we walk as people of God. Why? Because of all people, Mary knows how it would feel if you are always remembered for your shortcomings. Just think about this for one minute. This couple is having this wedding. Apparently, they are out of wine. What will the wedding party remember them for? Their love and devotion for each other? No, they will go into the record books of all wedding caterers as the couple who was too cheap to buy enough wine. They will always be remembered for what they couldn't do. 
They will always be remembered for their shortcomings of how they couldn't provide what people needed. Have you ever been remembered for your shortcomings? For anything that you didn't live up to the bar, that you couldn't do, that you were not good enough? Were you always defined by something that you weren't able to do? Your shortcomings and whatever it was, something that defined you in a very negative sense. That's where this whole story starts to hit home, my friends. This couple, if it wouldn't have been for Mary's observant eye that they are out of wine, would be going into the books for something that they couldn't do, that they didn't have, and that fell short. You don't want to be like that couple when you plan your wedding that didn't have enough wine. So in my books, Mary's stating something that she states for all of us. You're out. You're dry. And then Jesus does what his mother says to do. We again don't know why he does what his mom says. Mary doesn't appear to me like she would throw a fit in front of people. It's just not the Mary I picture. Maybe he, sh he is not wanting a speech. My boys never wanted a speech at home. They did not like my speeches. Neither does Emma already, and she's three. But he just goes and does. And he does some very simple things, my friends. We always think about this very first miracle as something out of the world. He does simple things, things that you will do throughout your day, in and out. He says, now this is the word become flesh, the light of all mankind. He says to the acolytes, go and fill some water in the jug. That's very assertive. Pretty simple, straightforward. I don't have a jug here, but fill the water in the jug. Now there are six jugs, each holding 30 gallons. That makes 180 gallons. I don't even think we're 180 people here today. And then when you filled in the water in the jug, I want you to take a cup and take some out. Anyone can do this. Nothing special about this. And once you took some out, i like you to walk with that water across and give it to the chief steward. Now you tell me whether or not that's hard to do. Pour some water, take some out, give it to someone to drink. I don't know how many times a day I do this. Or do you do that? It's simple. That's all Jesus does. Do you know what happens then? The miracle actually happens. The miracle actually happens in the tasting and the proclamation, the saying out what he experienced. This is the best wine ever. That's where the miracle actually happens is when the steward tastes. When the steward tastes, this is a home communion kit if you're not familiar with it. This is what the steward does. He tastes. Like you and I will be invited to that table to taste. Like the people who receive home communion will be invited to taste. That's the miracle, is the tasting of the goodness and the abundance of the Lord. And then there's a second part to that miracle, is it's not meant to keep. He can't keep from proclaiming it, saying there's an abundance, there's a goodness, there is something that hasn't been there before. That's what we are to do. 
And from then on, everything has changed, right? Now what do we remember that couple for that had a wedding? Because we're still at the wedding. What do we remember them for? They are the people that invited Jesus to the party. Right? They went into history. We still tell their story, not for what they couldn't do, but for who they invited and who was present in their life. Do you remember that wedding where they invited Jesus and where there was so much good wine? In abundance, 180 gallons. That's my friend, is what happens in our lives. That's where the deep truth lies for us. Not that we need to be remembered. We don't have to be remembered for what we can't do, what we aren't, what we can't live up to. We're not defined by our shortcomings anymore. Jesus invites us to rewrite that story. As we invite him daily into our life, we are invited to taste his grace and goodness and mercy. And that actually happens at camp in a very condensed version. You're taking out of that life where you're defined by anything and everything that keeps you short and little. And you're put into the special place where you are given that opportunity to just blossom and grow and experience the goodness and mercy of Christ through your neighbor and through the tasting and the seeing of the great outdoors and this faithful community that is gathered around you. And then you come back into your community and all you are invited to do, you're not invited to do miracles. Christ is the living word that came down to earth to do the miracle. What we are invited to do are two simple things, to taste and to proclaim and to let God do his job. We are people that are invited and today is the day where we taste the goodness of the Lord. And then we are to go out and proclaim that goodness and faithfulness, that there is abundance, that there is an abundance. The wedding couple had more than they had ever planned for. See, that is the beauty of when you, we let God do his work. They had only planned for so much. But once they invited Jesus and allowed him to come, he multiplied and gave them more than they could ever ask for. Taste, see, and proclaim. It's that simple. And do you remember Mary just making this statement? I think she also knew that the disciples needed a morality boost. They had second thoughts about all of this. Did they do the right thing? How does this passage end? And the disciples believed. That, my friends, is our call. Taste, proclaim, believe. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing with me the hymn of the day, number 310.
Please join me for the statement of faith, which is found in your bulletin. We believe God is our creator and has promised to love us always. We believe Jesus Christ, fully God and fully human, is God's promise living among us. He experienced all the pain and joy and challenges of human life. God's forgiving love was revealed to us when Jesus suffered death on the cross. He came back to new life and has promised us new life in unity with God. We believe the Holy Spirit is God's promise touching our spirits, guiding us even though the darkest and most difficult moments of our lives. We believe God is among us in community, mysterious yet very real. God promised us to be with us always, even to the end of the age. You may be seated. Our milestone today is for our sixth graders, where in their education moment, they'll meet with Pastor Constanza to go over the Apostles' Creed, to dive more into with the Trinity and what we know and what we believe with that. Sixth graders, also please note that you won't go straight to your education moment. We want to make sure you get some time downstairs with your family for the camp party. So please head downstairs and then meet in the fireside room by 1025 to have that education moment. Okay. When I call your name, you can come forward to our baptism fount to reach inside there and grab your prayer stone, and you'll learn more with that too when you have your education moment. Feel free to also make the sign of the cross with the water on your forehead if you would like as well. So when I call your name, please come forward. Ainsley Allen, Rannick Fierstead, Ryan Morse, Elena Rohde, Garrett Van Leer, Angel Bruna, Braden Gust, Ellie Ostis, Caitlin Schoenberg, Jake Wyman, Caden Drous, Trey Hoffman, Macy Patch, and David Shaw. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in so many ways as God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we confess our faith, let us know in our hearts that you are always with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, and I'll see you at 1025. Please rise. Let us pray. We are not alone. We live in God's world. You are present in the world and in our lives. Your activity and loving hand is made known to us through the beauty of creation and through the people around us. We actively share in you, rest with our thoughts, and discover the spiritual benefits of silence, solitude, contemplation, and rest. In the faces of those around us, in the stillness of quiet moments, we celebrate your presence in this world. Camp provides time for us to just be, to listen, and to meet you in the struggles and the joys of community. We are called to live with respect and creation. We eat, cook, and clean together, work and learn together, disagree and laugh together. We swim in lakes, seas, gather around fires, walk in woods, and gaze at stars. In creation and community, we discover that you are a life-changing God. We are a ministry of the ELCA that touches the lives of thousands of children, teens, young adults, 
adults and seniors every year. We meet you at camp, experience healthy community and deepen wholesome, wholesome relationships. We receive from you a vision of Christian community to pursue and tools to assist us in becoming a part of a healthy community. We are called to see justice and resist evil. As campers, we learn while engaging in acts of service according to the gifts that you have given us, we learn to care for creation in practical and sustainable ways. We are called to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. We are committed to Christian education programming in an environment where your loving presence can be celebrated and shared. At camp, we receive not only the biblical story to inform our story, but also opportunities to put our faith into practice. At camp, we find concentrated and uninterrupted time together with mentors and counselors who, gui who can guide us in the process of growing in our relationship with you. We are the church living, moving, and breathing, celebrating your presence together at the camp, in the tradition and community. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please move around and share God's peace. You may be seated as we ready our hands and hearts for the offering and the women's choir is assembling this morning.
God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the wine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for your world signs of your gracious presence in Christ Jesus. We are Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, the Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are the sons of the generation, and the Lord is come to you. may be seated. If you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are all welcome to the Lord's table.
please rise with a blessing. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Name you beloved and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be up on you and remain with you always. Amen. You may be seated and we have some stories of the camp. I don't know who is coming up. Yeah. <coughs> Maggie, McKenna and Megan. We went to Outlaw Ranch this past summer and we would like to share our experiences with you. My favorite memory from camp this summer was when we were supposed to have our camp out, where we go and stay in tents and have a campfire. But then that night it was raining. It was raining, so we didn't get, so we didn't get to, and we were all upset. But, but our counselors made it possible for us to have a camp out by turning our worship area into our camp out. They made, set up tents and made a campfire, and we were, we played games, and that was one of my favorite moments of camp. My favorite things about camp this summer were all of the adventures that we had. Every day it was always something new to do and there was never a dull moment. Some of the things we did as adventures were go to Jewel Cave, go on a hike, ride bikes around Hill City, do service projects, and ride horses. They weren't just for fun either. Our counselors always made a way to tie it to our lesson of the day. The other thing I loved about camp was all of the lifelong friends I have made. To this day, I still talk with a friend I made about four years ago at camp, and we even get together every once in a while. So I went to, I've been to Nisadak four times and Outlaw once, and all those experiences have been awesome. I can't think of one single moment at camp when I felt unhappy besides of leaving. At Nisadak, we have worship, Bible study, free time for swimming, crafts and other activities, and lots of other fun moments and outlaw is just is great camp is definitely something you should be a part of no all right we do have a temple talk i cannot forget about that temple talk oh really I didn't know yes that. yeah that's why i'm saying it okay so um, loud the main announcement is please come and join us today for two things first between services we have camp a, a camp party i already made a reference there's great food games and sign up tables um, and then after the second worship service please join us for the an annual meeting i think it's uh, important you know, it's something it's not my highlight of the year but it's important to do it's one of the few things where you don't hear him say this is my favorite thing. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, but still, please come. Um, we have some interesting or important things to share and to discuss. Yeah. There are the order forms for the pizza um, for Super Bowl Sunday. So if you haven't ordered your pizza yet, feel free to do that. Um, anyone here went to Trinity Preschool or still goes to preschool at Trinity? Raise your hand. Would you want to do it again? Because it was so much fun, yes. So if you have a child that needs to go to preschool or know of children that are preschool age, sign up for Trinity starts on Monday. We always get two weeks early registration, so please spread the word. So you can sign me up. I can't could sign you up. I don't know which group you qualify for, but I let Miss Summer decide that. All right, at this time, then I'll call on the Valentine's folks to bring us greetings from the youth. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Uh, Bruce and myself are here. We're two of the youth going on the summer trip to Sky Ranch in Colorado. We have a little announcement. On behalf of the high schoolers attending Sky Ranch in Colorado this coming summer, we are excited to let you know we will be having the Valentine's dinner on February 10th at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The menu includes 
Tuscan blend vegetables, breadsticks, a garden salad, dessert, and the option of sausage and chicken rigatoni or alfredo cheese tortellini with sautéed vegetables. The food will be provided from Tony's Catering in Brandon, and we will begin selling tickets in the North Lex before and after the services this week. All proceeds will go to the support of the Sky Ranch trip. Uh, we know you guys have done a great job supporting us in the past, and we'd really like for it to continue throughout this year and the following years. So, thank you. Thank you. Did you say tortellini? Yeah. This is one of my favorites. Wow. There we go. I told you, it doesn't take much. No, it's true. Tortellini is always, is it cheese tortellini or what? They don't know. They don't, you don't know yet? Money. Just go eat them, then you know. Who's in charge? Lexi, please make cheese totally. They are really good. But well, do whatever you want. These fries, so sending him is Christ, whose glory fills the skies. Number 553 in the red hymnal.